Welcome to Living Our Faith with Archbishop Jerome Listecki. The latest news, important issues, and stories of Catholics living their faith in the Archdiocese of Milwaukee. Here's co-host Bob Bennis. Good morning and welcome to Living Our Faith with Archbishop Jerome Listecki. I'm Bob Bennis. And today we're joined by a man who is a self-proclaimed happy priest who answered God's call 40 years ago and has every day since as well as a Catholic singer, songwriter, and recording artist who just also happens to be an interior designer. And we are here, it, it, we just started the, I still have the, it's I still kind of have. It's isn't it? An interior designer, designer type of, that's what, that's what, that's exactly what a singer, songwriter, poet does is it <laughs> designs. designs from the interior. That's, a, that's exactly. Metaphorically speaking. Metaphorically speaking, of course. I, I, I want to talk about the, about the ashes on the forehead because we just, we just, started the Lenten journey day before yesterday, and it, it's an interesting great, time great of sign. year. Yes. It's great, a, a great sign. I, um, you know, it's a, rarely do we wear our, our, our Catholic identity on our sleeves. Mm-hmm. Uh, when, uh, when it comes to uh, Ash Wednesday, you know, that smudge on the top of the head was supposed to be a cross, with, obviously, with the, the ashes. But the, oftentimes, if you're like me, you, you can't even do stickmen correctly. So, you know, it, uh, it barely becomes uh, uh, visible. But it's a, it's a cross. But everybody knows that you're wearing that, um, those ashes as a, uh, basically a penitential sign, but a sign of identification with mm-hmm. Christ. You know, you're marked for salvation by that uh, by that cross and it begins uh, the 40 days of lent mm-hmm. you know the the ashes i um this last uh, ash wednesday i was at um, a pious that's my a- annual event that i go to pious high school and i'm there with the uh, kids and i offer the mass and i basically and offer ashes foreheads. to them and smudge their <laughs> foreheads right it smudge their foreheads but you, you think about uh, think about what it uh, what a statement it means in our secular world where we rarely have time for god in almost anything there's all of a sudden people walking around saying they've, they've been marked. Mm-hmm. They've been marked. Now, the, the starkness, I, I love the starkness of it. You know, remember, man, you are dust, and to dust you shall return. I love the starkness of it. But uh, within that is the, the cross, which conquers those ashes and conquers that dust and offers salvation. And what I like is I like the look I get from people who don't quite get it <laughs> because I, I my back, my hope is that They'll think about it. It'll either settle in or they'll research it, become interested, maybe even intrigued, and who knows what that brings. Yes, you're right. You're right. And um, it, hopefully it brings the hope um, uh, of salvation in Christ. So We've got a lot of hope with us this morning. We've got Father Dominic Rosholi, as well as Anne, uh, Anna I'm sorry, Anna Nuzo. Welcome to both of you. Thank you. Thank you very Pleasure much. Pleasure to be here. And you know, we, uh, you know, usually for our listeners, we ask you to, to kind of uh, to have you p- them plug into your uh, your sto- story. So, Anna, if we can start with uh, Dom, I ask uh, Father Dom's a longtime friend. Let me, uh, you know, there's certain characteristics that certain people have. You know, certain uh, talents. Sure. Father Dom is a great entrepreneur. He's uh, an ability to be able to see things and uh, and make things kind of attractive. To take the the mundane or the ordinary and kind of offer and pull things together so that uh, people kind of see um, uh, not only religious or uh, or takes it and, and parlays it into you know support for various charities. You know, uh, but but Father Dom, how did the vocation? How did the faith come about in your, uh, in your parish? Obviously, Italiano, huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, I grew up in Our Lady of Mount Carmel Church in Kenosha, Wisconsin, but I attended uh, St. James Catholic School. And so um, I've been in Catholic schools. I was in Catholic schools all my life, and I had the Sisters of St. Joan and Tita at oh, Mount yeah. Carmel, sure, sure. since now a Dominicans at St. James, and just a lot of um, good priests as models. And um, at Mount Carmel, what we have is we have a street procession where we carry the statue of Mary and uh, Jesus through the streets. And of course, I grew up in the 1950s when absolutely everything was a sin. And there was a lot of guilt being thrown at you. But then as, uh, and we were in confession all the time. And, but then- if if you're sinning all the time, (laughs) you should be in confession. But every week, we were making them up. Anyway, um, but once a year we had the street procession and I thought, how bad can we be 
God's letting the statue of Mary and Jesus go by my house. And then there's a big party in the park. There's a festival. So that kind of balanced it out, which has been Mary's role oftentimes in church history anyway. But um, I'd have to say uh, growing up Catholic and my schooling had a lot to do with my vocation. With vocation. And then uh, the faith of my parents. And and obviously a priest of the Archdiocese of Milwaukee. So where did you go to seminary? Where did you go to? I when I, I went out of eighth grade to St. Francis. To St. Francis. And then, yeah. The first year was on Kinnickinick Avenue where Thomas Moore is now. Oh, yeah. Sure. sure. That was a, that's where we, we were boarders. We, we were residents. Uh-huh. And then we came over to DeSales. And then uh, I left one year and went to Loris College because I was interested in becoming a Dominican. Oh, <laughs> so oh, they wanted good. me to go to Loris. Order of preachers. Yeah. So I wonder why now it all fits. But then I came back and uh, stayed with the rest of the time in the seminary here at St. Francis. And ordained for the archdiocese what year? 1974. 74. Yeah. Um, and um, some of the assignments that you had? Oh, St. Alphonsus in Greendale. Oh, good. St. Francis Hospital in um, Milwaukee. Uh-huh. Uh, St. John the Baptist in Plymouth. uh uh-huh. And then uh, Blessed Sacrament in Milwaukee. Yeah. And then um, many years ago, I got cancer, went into remission, and spent a lot of years doing um, community organizing and fighting for the neighborhood. That's what led me to create products uh-huh. so we could raise money for the inner city neighborhood. Yeah, ter- terrific, terrific. Kind of merging all that uh, your talents together, both the spiritual side and the entrepreneurial side, and doing it for the sake of um, uh, the sake of humanity. Wonderful. Wonderful. And a, a, lot, a lot of that went back to the street procession because what that street procession taught me was that everything that's in church, all the, that goodness and holiness has to come out into the streets. And that was what I heard from that street procession. And so that's what prompted me to, you know, go after um, landlords and drug houses and gang problems uh, in the neighborhood when I came back to the neighborhood. Very important work. Mm-hmm. Very important work down. Anna, how about it? Tell me a little bit of something about your family. Tell me, go back, first of all, to your Catholic roots, okay? Okay. Um, well, Father Dom is not the only Italian in the room. <laughs> 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 my parents uh, immigrated here from Italy uh-huh. as well. So my first language was Italian. And we grew, we grew up living near Mount Carmel and then later moved near St. Mary's. And that's where I went to church and went to school, St. Uh-huh. Mary's Catholic in Kenosha. And now I'm a parishioner at St. Anne's in Ple- Pleasant, Pleasant Prairie. Prairie. So I began singing. Ba- Father Bob Wainer. Father Bob. Father Bob, yes. yes. Good man. Good Very man. good man. Um, he has a dog now. Have oh, you met his dog? Oh my gosh, cool. I will. <laughs> I'm sure I will. He's beautiful. Uh, Buddy is his name. So I grew up singing and teaching myself how to play the piano. Uh-huh at a young age and started singing at St. Mary's Catholic Church in fourth grade. And then I continued to sing weekly masses and then in high school began singing for weddings and funerals. And um, college was taking some music courses, graduated from Parkside and currently um, cantor at St. Anne's and I have a band and we sing for uh, concerts and retreats and missions and and um, things like that. So, I do believe that's my vocation, and I'm doing exactly what I should be doing. Right, and married. I'm married, and I forgot so. to mention that I'm married. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I didn't forget. Uh, thank you. You're welcome. I'm married to a wonderful man named Michael Nuzo, and I have two children, two sons that are teenagers, and they go to St. Joseph ah, you know, Academy. Wonderful. They go to St. Joseph's Academy. Yes, Great. in Kenosha. Great. You, you, you said that there was a, a significant uh, moment in your life when suddenly you want, wanted the, the faith and the church to be more. Tell me about what what happened. Yes, uh, I there a hunger grew within me. I wanted to learn more about my faith and become closer to God. And the way I did that was I consecrated myself to Mary through Father Michael Gately's um, 33 Days to Morning Glory. There was a group of us that did that at St. Anne's. And that truly transformed me and energized me and led me to write many of the songs that you hear on this CD and my previous CD as well. Uh, it started with the Marian Consecration Prayer that I turned into a song. And since then, many prayers I've turned into song. And it is. Be- I truly believe it's since that consecration that this has all 
come to be. And did the writing become easier for you after the consecration? Because it's it's 33 days, yes. and you go through the book, and your eyes after that were... <laughs> It, it was able to see more easily content for songs. Yes. Lyrics. Yes. Right. It, it was no longer, because I struggled with lyrics, I'm more of the the music, and w- the idea came to me through the Holy Spirit and through mm-hmm. that consecration to take these prayers and put contemporary music to them and in this way spread it to the youth, to the people of today, prayers that they may have never heard before. And the Memorare was a new prayer for me. Mm -hmm. During the Marian consecration, I'd never heard it. And that's become one of my favorite songs. Um, And it's spread. It's it's been spreading. I, I have young people from grade school through high school and college that have come to know these prayers because of my songs. So well, I'm, I'm going to take us through a break. And okay. Then, uh, uh, choose one uh, one song off your, your CD that we can listen to a little bit. Which one would you sure. like? Sure. Well, off this CD, um, since this is Lent, I would love for us to play Promise of Tomorrow. You're listening to Living Our Faith here on Relevant Radio. Woke up this morning feeling frightened and frail, not knowing how, how to prevail, praying for forgiveness, fighting back resistance, regretting all the years, the tears, the fears, I lost my way, and forever it stayed. What you are listening to is the voice of Anna Nuzzo. This is Living Our Faith with Archbishop Jerome Lestecki. Anna, that's a beautiful song. Thank you very much. You know, one of the things that happens during Lent, and, uh, and, and a wonderful aspect that you're able to take your, your whole prayer and spiritual life and, and put it to music for people to, to share in, you know, you're inviting them to do that. You're also doing it in terms of um, uh, an aspect that we do during Lent, which are, are retreats asking people to pull back to kind of think about their their life to do something in, in in terms of prayer and the two of you uniquely have kind of merged that together in story and song haven't you Don? yes i met anna at a funeral she was singing at a funeral and on the way out she handed me her first cd and said here this is for you and i listened to it it was very inspirational and so i asked her if she'd like to do a cd together with stories and songs and then we decided to talk to Father Bob at St. Anne's Uh to see if he would be interested in our doing the first uh, parish mission there with stories and songs. So that's where the idea was born, and uh, we did it there in uh, Advent. Yes. Well, well, let's get a a little taste of of that. Let's do that... uh, one cut of, of Michael and Megan, and so um, maybe we can we, we can get a, a taste of Father Dom doing stories. We've got Nisa Delmas here, our in studio producer, and Nisa is going to start that now. Once upon a time, uh, Michael came to camp, and so did Megan, and they were seven years old, and they were this tall, seven year old tall. Every year they came to camp every summer, and um, Michael grew to be six foot two, and now he's a counselor at camp. Megan stayed seven-year-old size. And she has some kind of strange problem in her system, in her body, that won't let her grow. But now she's 17, and he he was 17. And it was Megan's um, senior year at high school. They live in two different states, but they know each other very well because they went to the same camp session every summer and became the best of friends. So she lives in Connecticut and he lives in New York, and through the Camp Grapevine, he found out that Megan was quite upset because she said to her her mother and father, who's gonna wanna take me to the prom? I won't, I'm I'm a senior one time in my life, I, I won't be going to the prom. Well, through the camp grapevine, Michael found out that Megan wanted to go to the prom, so he calls her up and invites her to the prom. And they went, limo, the whole nine yards, tuxedo, corsage, 
corsage for her wrists, full long dress, out to eat after. And everyone said, well, how, how, did, it, how did it work? Because he's so tall and she's so small. And they said, he danced on his knees. He danced on his knees. We know dancing on our knees because many of you have danced on your knees when you were hugging your children when they were little or tying their shoe or you've danced on your knees when there was a hospital bed in your living room and someone that you love was dying and so you were on your knees so you would be at the same level that they are in the bed. So we all know dancing on our knees. And I want to thank you for all the times that you have danced on your knees. May you please continue to do that for the people who need you to do that. He danced on his knees. Father, that's very, very compelling. Now, where did you come up with the inspiration for the, yeah. the story? Well, I have um, many years experience at Paul Newman's camps for kids with cancer. Uh -huh. So for 19 years, I was in the cabins with the kids. And for the last uh, 28 years, I've been working with the parents. So all the inspiration for most of the stories is from the camp. Now, Anna, with, uh, doing a, a retreat with this Father Dom here, I'm sure people came up and said, Anna, we love, we love you, but could you drop your partner there for a little bit? <laughs> so did, so did, did, tell me, what, were the, what was the response of, of, of having this, uh, uh, this, this woman doing this uh, talented song, this priest doing uh, stories? What, what was the response from people? It was actually very, very positive. They enjoyed... Father Dom is pretty famous in Kenosha and Racine, and so a lot of people have heard his stories and come to the event to re-hear them again. And my songs are new, and it was neat that we paired particular songs with particular stories. So not only did they have the story told to them, but then the experience became more internalized because the song continued the theme, and I received many comments on how the whole mission was a very deep and fulfilling and inspirational experience. They actually felt it. They felt it in their hearts. They felt it in their souls because not just a song and not just a story, but the combination of the two is what really won over many, many souls. Yeah, I, I love the, the, the title of your song that you that we played for A Promise of Tomorrow. Mm -hmm. you know, how, how did you come up with that one? That's about forgiveness. Um, we all are sinners. We all make mistakes, and it's the promise of reconciliation um, that our Lord forgives us, and tomorrow is another day. And that song was actually written by another Italian friend of mine. <laughs> do you have any, anything theme. else but Italian friends? No, I in the do. Family. I promise. <laughs> I do. Uh, her name is Joni Bartucci, and she wrote the lyrics to that song. Oh, beautiful. Um, and I wrote the music, so that's how that... Why don't you tell the Archbishop yeah. about the Angel of God song? Oh, the Angel of God song is very dear to me because my son Drake, who's 15, is singing on it. So I'm inspiring... Um, my family to be very involved in music as well and he sings verse one on verse two on that song and he also plays piano at home and my other son plays guitar and michael plays the harmonica wow not family this, affair not, <laughs> they're not recorded on this song, this song though but at home we do that but my son drake it's has a the, beautiful it's voice. the uh, prayer to your guardian angel Anna had oh. not oh. grown up with that. Mm -hmm. Really, angel of God, my yeah. guardian, guardian dear, dear. To whom God's and she put it to music. To wow! Terrific. Father Dom asked me to put that to music, and that's on the CD as well. And um, a lot of people now know the song and know the prayer. Father Dom, mm -hmm. in col collaboration, when you have to work with someone in terms of music, and then you're doing the stories, what what has that done for your own personal life, your own spiritual life? Well, it's made me listen more, and um, also made me realize. You know, I was always doing these parish missions by myself, and you know, it makes me realize it's not about me; it's about getting the message across and about celebrating Jesus. And so then you get a whole new person coming in, doing um, the songs with the stories. It um, just brought me to a deeper spiritual level. Give our audience some idea: at how often do you go out and perform together? 
Is it is it periodic? Is it regular? Uh, now I know you're 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 cantering at church on Sundays, uh, but give us some idea. Well. Um, I think currently we do more things separate than together. Okay. We're, we're in the process of promoting to do more and more missions together. Mm-hmm. The um, first one was Advent. was in December. Was so right. we just released the CD and we just did the first one in December. So we're hoping come spring we'll be booking a lot more events together. But I sing regularly at St. Anne's every week and I sing at Corier Zoo in Milwaukee at St. Um, what is it? Roberts. Roberts. St. Roberts and Shorewood. St. Shorewood. 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 Roberts and Shorewood. Shorewood. Yeah. I cannot remember it. Um, Wednesday nights I help out with Corier Zoo there. So I'm singing regularly, um, which I, I greatly enjoy. That's how I pray. You and, know? and was there ever a time where you said, you know, someday I think I'll perform at Carnegie Hall? What was that like? Yes. That was a dream come true. I was approached by contemporary Christian artist John Ngati, and he asked me to sing with him at Carnegie Hall in New York wow. a couple of years ago. And I sang a solo, and I sang along uh, with with a choir as well. So that I can check that off my bucket list, but I hope someday I'll get to do it again. That's amazing. Maybe you and I can do an event out there. I'm game. <laughs> how about good? How about, uh, how about vision? Uh, you know, obviously we're talking through Lent and people are going a spiritual um, uh, spiritual journey. Uh, uh, Father Dan, what do you see as a um, you project as a as a vision for uh, for today's uh, Catholic? What what would you call them to do? What would you try to inspire them to do? Well, what we try to inspire them to do with the stories and the songs is to recognize how precious they are, that they were formed and fashioned in their mother's wombs by God's loving hands, that they all have gifts, and that um, it's time to share the gifts. And I think part, uh, the, the biggest part of the vision is to w- awaken people to their own goodness and preciousness. How about yourself, Anna? I, I agree with that wholeheartedly. And also, it's a call to not only deepen your faith, however that may be, through prayer or book study or going to Mass more regularly, but also a call to serve. So it's not, like you said, it's not only about us, it's about others. And as we go into our final break, we'll listen to some more of Anna Nuzzo with her latest CD along with Father Rosholi. Uh, the name of the CD is Believe. More information on that CD and the others at ananuzzo.com. And Anna's CDs are also available at iTunes and cdbaby.com. That's the letter C, D, baby.com. And also at area Walgreens stores in Racine and Kenosha. And we'll be right back. I tried to understand such an Did you know that the Floor Mart is top rated on Angie's List? That's because of our expert staff and our certified installers. We guarantee it. Don't make a costly mistake. Come to the Floor Mart. Did I mention that at the Floor Mart we have our own certified installers? And every job comes with our guaranteed installation as well as our exclusive spot and spill warranty. Don't make a costly mistake. Come to the Floor Mart. Did you know that the Floor Mart is more than floors? That's right. We also have a large selection of quality cabinets, countertops, ceramic tiles, hardwood floors, and free financing. Remember, only the Floor Mart guarantees your installation for life. No one else does that. Stop in at the Floor Mart on 124th Street, just north of Burleigh, or visit us on the web at thefloormart.com. Thefloormart.com. Don't make a costly mistake. The Floor Mart, affordable quality, guaranteed. Good morning. Wishing you a happy start to the Lenten season, I'm Grace David with headlines from the Catholic Herald and catholicherald.org. Six words sparked almost five hours of debate in the Archdiocese of Milwaukee's Chapter 11 reorganization case. A motion to approve proposed insurance settlements started a heated discussion in bankruptcy court last week. Archdiocesan insurers are offering $10.3 million to certain victim survivors in exchange for protection from further claims. Attorneys for victim survivors are against the proposed settlement. 
Read more on the most recent court proceedings in this week's Catholic Herald and at catholicherald.org. Total openness is what Pope Francis is calling for, as he shared some words of wisdom with the Church's 20 brand new cardinals last week. At the ceremony, the Holy Father reminded the cardinals that the Church cannot shun our wounded, our sick, and our sinners, and says that serving others is a title of honor. Citing Mark's Gospel, Pope Francis says that Jesus healed a leper without regard for himself or customs, and that the Church must follow the way of Jesus, the way of mercy and reinstatement. Read more in this week's Catholic Herald. A man exiting a bus alone, with no shoes and no socks, during Holy Week. It's a vivid memory for Deacon Don Vorkowski, who helped this needy stranger at Father Jean's Help Center in West Dallas. The center, founded more than 40 years ago, shares clothing with Milwaukee's homeless and needy residents. Borkowski says he washed the man's feet and gave him shoes and socks. Then, this act of kindness evolved into an annual shoe drive called Share a Pair. Sponsored by Stands Fit for Your Feet, the company partners with community volunteers for gently used shoe donations. The company says it has collected almost 200,000 shoes in eight years. Share a Pair continues through the month of February, with drop-off locations in Bayshore, Brookfield, and Greenfield. Whether donating clothes and shoes, or your time and talents, Lent is a wonderful season to share with others. For more seasonal ideas, visit archmill.org and catholicherald.org. I'm Grace David, sending you back to living our faith with Archbishop Lestat. Did you know that the Floor Mart is top rated on Angie's List? That's because of our expert staff and our certified installers. We guarantee it. Don't make a costly mistake. Come to the Floor Mart. Did I mention that at the Floor Mart, we have our own certified installers? And every job comes with our guaranteed installation, as well as our exclusive spot and spill warranty. Don't make a costly mistake. Come to the Floor Mart. Did you know that the Floor Mart is more than floors? That's right. We also have a large selection of quality cabinets, countertops, ceramic tiles, hardwood floors, and free financing. Remember, only the Floor Mart guarantees your installation for life. No one else does that. Stop in at the Floor Mart on 124th Street, just north of Burleigh, or visit us on the web at thefloormart.com. Thefloormart.com. Don't make a costly mistake. The Floor Mart, affordable quality, guaranteed. Well, just like that, the half hour has come and gone, as they always seem to do. And I'd like to thank our guests today, Anna Nuzzo and Father Dominic Rosholi. You can reach both of them, link to their websites through the archmill.org website. So you make sure you want to do that if, uh, if uh, you want to pursue information on both the fundraising items as well as the music. And Archbishop, if you would be so kind as to close us with prayer. I would be happy to. And uh, this is the prayer for the mission of the Archdiocese of Milwaukee. And uh, in Lent, during Lent, we're on a mission. And um, the mission is to draw us closer to Christ. And that's the whole aspect of the synod that we've just gone through. So in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, almighty and ever-living God, we praise you, we bless you, for you are great indeed. Grant, we pray, as on that first Pentecost, that tongues of fire may descend upon us, and that the driving wind of your Holy Spirit may blow boldly into our hearts. Loving God, we ask you, make us effective and holy witnesses of the death and resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ. Increase our faith through the sacramental life of the Church. Grant us courage to follow you as faithful disciples. Embolden us, O God, so that we may go forth to proclaim your gospel and renew the face of the earth. In this Archdiocese of Milwaukee, we humbly pray for strength and fortitude to follow your great commission, to go and make disciples of all people, living our faith through word and deed, through the intercession of St. John, the evangelist, patron of the Archdiocese, and Mary, mother of the church. We ask all this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And may the blessings of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit descend upon us and remain with us forever. Amen. 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 Archbishop, thank you. Anna, Father, thank you. To our listeners, thank you. Encore airings of this program tomorrow morning at 930 and then again Sunday at 930. I'm Bob Bennis. Thanks for listening and remember to walk with Christ. This has been Living Our Faith with Archbishop Jerome Listecki and co-host Bob Bennis. Join us again next week for the latest news, important issues, and stories of Catholics living their faith in the Archdiocese of Milwaukee.